گرفتمش با یک پشپا با سوریاد آمد پایین با سوریاد آمد پایین و این زانو چپ نگذاشت با پشتش تا جایی که ترتوان داشتم گروش رو فشوردم بعد برگردون دمش برگردون دمش سریعا رو سریش دو دور دور گردنش پیچیدم و گره های محکمی زدم یک سری همون چونی که اول بود و چادری نبود آنتویی بود قبل قصدشم که توی باخچه حیات چالش کنیم قطعی دیگه به ذهن هم سیتی موکتی داشتیم توی همکاری حیات و آورد داخل موکت پیشیدم گذاریم بیشتر که موتور وارد بشه به بیرون In Mashhad, Iran, in 2000, a tense atmosphere hangs over the city as prostitutes continue to disappear, only to turn out dead on the streets days later. All the victims were strangled by their own hoods and wrapped in their own robes. These poor women died in a miserable state. The killings became known as the spider murders. People believed that the murderer used the head scarf to trap women just as spiders use webs to trap victims. This got the mysterious murderer the nickname, Spider Killer. The opening confession comes from this killer, Saeed Hanai. However, Saeed thinks he has a good reason to murder these prostitutes. He said, I killed the women for the sake of God and for the protection of my religion because they were prostitutes and were corrupting other people. Hello everyone, this is Black Bunny. Why did Saeed have such a weird reason to kill? Let's look at his life first. Saeed Hanai was born in an ordinary middle-class family in Iran in 1962. He was a construction worker and lived with his wife and three children. He had a poor relationship with his mother, who is said to have abused him on a regular basis. Between 2000 and 2001, 19 prostitutes were killed, although Saeed only confessed to killing 16 of them in court. Saeed would roam the night on his motorcycle, lure the prostitutes home, kill them, and throw their bodies back on the street. Strangely, many people applaud these murders. Why? It turns out that in his own twisted perception, Saeed thought he was a savior and a purifier, his mission to clean up his city. معذرت من یه سوال دارم شما یه جوری تعریف می‌کنی انگار مثلا مرغ و گوسفند و کوچیک نه میگم چه فرقی شما بین این زنا و مرغ و گوسفند اصلا هیچ برام اهمیتی نداشت که یک مثلا آدمی یا مثلا چیزی میگم که اگه حیوان بود بیشتر دلم بود his murder was admired by many religious extremists in Iran and he was regarded by some as a hero even his son believed his father was doing something brave and pre-worthy. Iran, because I can see the film, I can see that if the people are being arrested, they 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 are being arrested, but is this really the truth? Saeed argued that his wife was once mistaken for a prostitute by a taxi driver, which made him decide to start purifying the city. He himself dislikes the media calling him a killer and prefers to be called an anti-street woman activist. But no matter how much Saeed justifies his crimes, he is still recognized as a serial killer. Let's first look at the definition of a serial killer. A serial killer is someone who murders three or more people over a period of more than a month with regular circles between murders. Psychological gratification is often the motivation for a serial killing and many of them involve sexual contact. Serial killer, this word comes from FBI agent Robert Ressler, who we've mentioned many times in our previous videos. However, some historical criminologists believe that there have been serial killers throughout ancient human history, and the legends of werewolves and vampires may have been inspired by the serial killers of these times. According to Sima Qian's historical book in Chinese history, Liu Pengli, the nephew of Emperor Jing of the Han Dynasty, took pleasure in killing people. He always led slaves to kill and rob goods at dusk, which left in its wake more than a hundred victims. Another example is Joe DeRay in Europe in the 15th century, 
John of Arc's former comrade in arms, accused of raping and murdering many boys, with victims' numbers ranging from 140 to 800. Elizabeth Bathory, a 1600 Hungarian nobleman, is said to have tortured and killed as many as 650 girls and young women. Let's not forget the infamous Jack the Ripper, considered the first serial killer in modern history. Most of the recorded serial killers of the 20th century came from the United States. The phenomenon of serial killing in the United States was particularly prominent from 1970 to 2000, known as the Golden Age of serial killing. The number of active serial killers in this country peaked in 1989 and has been steadily declining since then. At the same time, the crime rate in the United States has declined overall. As for why so many serial killers appeared during this period, some criminologists believe that most of these serial killers were born during the war years, and many of their fathers were veterans who suffered from PTSD. Therefore, these children who grew up in violent or unstable families were more inclined to become violent as adults. The sharp decline in serial killers is due to the improvement of criminal investigation technology. And the judicial system, as well as the fact that media reports have made it more difficult to hide or run from the authorities. In our usual impression, serial killers are mostly white Americans, but in fact, there are also serial killers among Asians and Blacks in the United States. If calculated based on the percentage of the U.S. population, whites are no more likely to become serial killers than any other races. This stereotype is the result of media overreporting of white serial killers and under-investigation of crimes committed by minority offenders. In addition, not only the United States but also serial killers have officially existed in every country in this world. So, what are the characteristics of a serial killer? Some common ones include: they may exhibit varied degrees of mental illness. They are often emotionally, physically, or sexually abused by family members. They usually have manifestations of sexual inversions, more likely fetishes. They were often bullied or socially isolated as children. They also exhibit features of the McDonald traits, which are number one, obsessed with arson; number two, cruelty to animals; number three, bedwetting after the age of twelve. Some are involved in petty crimes such as fraud, theft, vandalism, or similar offenses. Usually, they tend to do some menial work and always have a hard time keeping their jobs. Studies have shown that serial killers usually have average intelligence or below-average intelligence, and those serial killers with high IQ are often the images presented after creative license in film and television. The FBI's crime manual divides serial killers into three categories: organized, disorganized, and hybrid. The average IQ of serial killers who are organized is higher than that of disorganized ones. Methodical killers meticulously plan their murders, and they possess enough social skills that allow them to develop intimacy and other interpersonal skills, sometimes even to attract a mate and start a family. This type of person is most likely to be described as kind and unlikely to hurt anyone by people they know, such as Ted Bundy and John Wayne Gacy. Disorganized serial killers are usually more impulsive, often use random weapons to commit murders, and usually don't even try to hide the body. They are likely to be unemployed, deeply lonely, and have few friends. Often have a history of mental illness. Their modus operandi often marked by excessive violence and sometimes necrophilia, as in Jeffrey Dahmer and Otis Tool. The hybrid type had the characteristics of both. Serial killers are generally divided into four categories based on their motives: visionary, hedonistic, power control, and mission-oriented. Of course, many killers may exhibit more than one type. Visionary serial killers are usually accompanied by a certain degree of confusion. They believe that they are another person or have supernatural forces instructing them to kill. Hedonistic serial killers regard killing as a great psychological satisfaction. The power control serial killer's main purpose is to control and exert influence over the victim, 
And lastly, the mission-oriented serial killer says it has his duty to rid the world of those who are undesirable, such as homeless people, drug addicts, prostitutes, homosexuals, and so on. As for the reasons for the formation of serial killers, we have talked about it in the previous video about Javed Iqbal. Make sure to watch it to learn more. After explaining the definition of a serial killer, we shall go back to Said. So, is it true that, as he said, he killed people only for holy religious ideals? In fact, Said enjoyed the process of murdering the sex workers. He said, they were as worthless as cockroaches to me. Toward the end, I could not sleep at night if I had not killed one of them that day, as though I had become addicted to killing them. It seems that even he admitted that the act of murder is addictive and hard to control. When the reporter asked them, do you have any remorse? He replied, خیلی تکون دهنده بود کسی که بعد از گذروندن تمامی اون دوران زندان و محاکمه و تمام برخورت هایی که با یک قاتل میتونه باشه تمام اون هرکش سر گذاشته هنوز به کشتن آدم ها افتخار میکنه و فخر میفروشه بابت اینها و نوع به نوعی به طرف مقابلش این رو القا میکنه که تو میتونی یکی از قربانیان من It is apparent that Said is a misogynist that enjoys the power to control the fate of these women. And these victims chosen by Said are obviously not without reason. As we analyzed in the last video about Edmund Kemper, in addition to the misogynistic factors in society, women's weak status also makes them easy targets. In Iran, prostitution is illegal, and these prostitutes are not protected by the law. Said obviously selected the most vulnerable group in Iranian society, one that, in his head, included the perfect victims. Therefore, although Said claims that he killed these women for a holy purpose, it is just an excuse for his misogyny under the banner of religion. Said had boasted that he wanted to clean up his area and that if he hadn't been caught, he could have killed as many as 150 women. He shows no remorse for his crimes, and if he hadn't been caught and brought to justice, we have reason to believe that, as he said, he would have committed more crimes. Said's arrest was attributed to a brave victim. She escaped after successfully defending herself against his attack and summoning up the courage to call the place a few days later, leading to his arrest shortly after. It is embarrassing that on the day Said was arrested, many supporters surrounded his house. In Iranian society, there are still many people who support his actions. On April 8, 2002, Said was hanged in prison, ending his sin for life. It can be said that the sentence was very fair. The 2022 Iranian film Holy Spider relatively truthfully restores the course of this case and portrays the experiences of women in Iranian society. The film was also nominated for Best Picture at the Cannes. Said's story is a sad tragedy, but it tells us religion can be helpful in guiding people to lead peaceful, meaningful lives, rather than an excuse to act out of personal interest and hurt others. Let your religion be less of a theory and more of a love affair. Gilbert Keith Tristerton